Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Alan Forward Live. I am David Mullings, and we're hosting it right here for you on Jamaica.com. 13 episodes, 30 minutes each. Sometimes we might run over. Sometimes I'm going to have special guests. Today I do have two guests, and we will cut over to the first one very soon. But I wanted to start by introducing myself first to the audience, to those of you who don't know who I am. Uh, we're sitting here in beautiful Kingston, Jamaica, in the home that I grew up in. And this is something that I felt was very special to do the first episode here in our living room. Because I am a member of the diaspora. And a lot of Jamaicans overseas don't really know what that word means. And we think that I think certainly that that is something that we, we need to spend more time talking about. Because I've had people literally ask, am I a member of the diaspora? And that is a, a really good question. And I was the first future leaders representative for the USA, representing Jamaicans under the age of 35, on the Jamaica Diaspora Advisory Board. But then the question is, what is the Jamaica Diaspora Advisory Board? Well, the Advisory Board was created, man, this is almost 20 years ago. It has alternated uh, between governments, they've all kept it regardless of PNP or JLP. And the idea was to have representatives that would be elected at a conference held in Jamaica every two years that represented three areas in the United States. So the Southeast USA is the lower 14 states down to Florida and over to Texas. We had the Northeast USA, partly represented by Achilia Maitland Lawrence, who was a part of our Future Leaders Initiative and actually was our campaign manager to help get her elected. And then we have the West Midwest, which covers the, the rest of the United States. So that's three in the US, two in Canada, and we have two in the UK. We then made a push to have, what I want to say is continuity. We want to have knowledge pass on and get young people involved. So at that time, I was asked to serve in the future leaders role in the US. We had one in Canada and then one in the UK, and we were advisors on the board for three years. And that board, while elected by us in foreign, we would actually advise the Prime Minister and the Minister of State, uh, Minister, Minister of Foreign Affairs and the Minister of State in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade. Usually we had meetings every six months. In the US we would also have meetings with the US State Department. We'd be on hemisphere calls that we aren't allowed to talk about publicly, what is discussed in those calls. And I happen to be on the board during our, our DUDOS issues. And so I have very very, very, I would say, key experience in my opinion, dealing with the fallout of that. And uh, having interacted with prime ministers, uh, it is important, in my opinion, to share some of the experience and also to, to give voice to the diaspora and, and our varied opinions. We're not a monolith. I think most importantly is that you know, most of us didn't run away and leave Jamaica. We've been given back in some way. Some of us come down there, some of us are sending people to visit. Whether or not we want, we are ambassadors for Jamaica. So if we speak bad about Jamaica, we are being ambassadors by telling them the crime is too high. Even though we have record arrivals of tourists, uh, if we talk about the good side of Jamaica and the good things that are happening, we are also being ambassadors. So whether or not we want, whatever we do, whatever we say, does impact Jamaica in some way. I think we, we have to look at the different generations as well and the areas that we grew up in. Obviously the diaspora is not just in the US, Canada and UK. That's where the concentration is. We estimate about 3 million Jamaicans live outside of the country, 2.7 million plus on the island. And so that could cause some tensions. We are now used to uh, a first world way of doing certain things. We easily get frustrated with uh, inefficiency that we see in Jamaica. We share ideas for the way we think, can, you know, we think things can improve, but sometimes our tone or the way we share it can also be an issue. You know, when you're on the island, you might feel like the person that is now gone away is saying it in a way that they feel like they know everything now because they're gone apart. And so that causes issues. I am atypical of the best, right? I grew up between Jamaica and Miami, went to prep school here, high school in Jamaica but was in Miami constantly because you know, my mother worked at Jackson Memorial Hospital. Mom is a nurse, dad is a doctor at UWE. And so I grew up between both worlds. And dad came from Montpelier just outside St. James. He grew up milking cows at four in the morning and worked his way up to provide a better life for us. We were raised as uptown kids. We never use that word here, but 
we grew up in Kingston 6, in, in Hope Pastures. You know, Mom used to walk 14 miles each way to the nearest bus stop in Clarendon, in Spalding, with shoes in her hand. She was barefoot, because there was one pair of shoes and she didn't want them to wear out. 14 miles to the bus stop to go to school. And so at 17, she actually went to, to the UK to become a nurse, and she worked her way up as well. I met Dad in Spanish Town. I was born in Keystone, of all the places, at St. Diego Heights, so Spanish Town came to town and then went from there. Uh, finished high school at 15, finished with farm, uh, grade 11, for those of you who don't know the farm system. Uh, Jamaica as always is a British system. And so I went straight to college, started at Broad Community College, played football there, played with Remona in Jamaica, finished at 19 and I came back home to actually play football. I played with Remona on the 20 team and played in the second division here in Jamaica, the National League. Didn't do so well, it's a different environment down there from up there. I ended up working with Jamaica National with JN Microcredit, their small business loans unit. And that was really my experience uh, learning more about Jamaica and how our approach to you know, turn hand make fashion and seeing how access to finance was really important and seeing a different side of Jamaica. I had to go around the entire island and interview the top clients for JN Microcredit and then present back to the board of directors. This was USAID, Earl Jarrett and Oliver Clark, and I had to present their plan for the next five years for how to scale it. That's now Jane Small Business Loans Limited. I uh, left and uh, did an MBA, got a scholarship to do an MBA at University of Miami. So I went back to Florida, which is my second home. And uh, Earl Jarrett helped me to pick some of the classes I did in the MBA program. Uh, my brother started at the same time, a year younger than me, Robert, and we launched Real Vibes. Uh, Real Vibes grew to be a platform with the largest collection of Caribbean music videos on the web. We launched in February 2002. And our goal was to support our culture, Caribbean culture, and taking it to the world uh, with videos. So behind the scenes, we were in studio with artists doing dub plays, recording songs. We went on tour. We would actually sponsor Songfest. And we signed a deal with YouTube in 2008 to become their first Caribbean media partner. And that really was our introduction to the rest of the world, right? Below the clock and how the rest of the world thought about Jamaica. Yeah. We were constantly referred to as the uptown kids when we got the studio with whether it's Elephant Man, Delano, TOK, Vibes Cartel, Assassin, Wayne Marshall, I mean, all these guys. We, we went on tour with Sean Paul in the US. And it was amazing to see the way crowds would react to him. We went on tour with TOK and to see the way people reacted to their songs and Jamaican culture made, made us proud. I think as Jamaicans we are very proud of that. Sometimes we can be too proud. So this is an independence you know, edition and I wanted to show a few things before we get cracking them. You know, this, is, this is exactly, so it's 2011, President Obama was running for re-election. His birthday he was turning 51, uh, Jamaica was turning 50. Uh, I got the chance to meet him because I had volunteered on the campaign with Marlon Hill uh, and we helped to raise money with a soccer for Obama tournament. And we got the opportunity for my family to meet him in Orlando and take photos. I gave him a Jamaica 50 pin of pride as his birthday present. And my wife, I had her design a card, a happy birthday card for Jamaica. We got permission to use the Jamaica 50 logo. And he signed it, and, and that's a card that we intend to donate to the Institute of Jamaica. It was never for us, it was for the people of Jamaica. And we keep a copy, where he met Luke, met my wife Catherine, and, and that's the way I think about Jamaica. I'm always finding ways to give back, to support. Uh, we own a business here in Jamaica, Real Bad Studios. Uh, the Chief Creative Officer is Kyle Eitel, who went to high school with me as well. And Kyle works closely with, with the Jack the Propeller program. He's working on films here in Jamaica, teaches at UA, and he's the one actually producing this podcast, and we're using his, his equipment for the video stream. But one of the things that, for me, is most important and frustrating is this. We have this book here that's called Vision 2030. Uh, it was published in 2009. I still have the, the large copy, uh, and I want to read Two other things here, and then we're going to bring in our guest. Yeah. And so the first one talks about the importance of the diaspora, and I'm going to read it word for word. Right, it talks about the diaspora. This group represents a major resource that can play a strategic role in the long-term economic development of our island, 
Similar to the important role that, for example, the Chinese and Indian diaspora are playing in the economic development of their respective countries. This role goes beyond being a source of remittances, important of Jamaica as an international business and other endeavors. And this is something that's been put out since 2009. We are not doing enough on our side and the diaspora and the other side locally in Jamaica to actually put those words into action. So I'm going to talk about the creative industries today and how the diaspora can play a role. I'm wearing this shirt that's done by Yes Jamaica, if you look at them on Instagram. This is a New York-based individual that is doing a project. The money from these shirts actually goes towards supporting Alpha, an entirely a non-profit initiative. I bought mine because I want to support, as we know, Alpha is essentially the home of, of our music when you think about Dean Craze and all these people. So I'm, I'm supporting that and I ask you to go and support them. I bought my shirt at Max Brown in Sovereign Center, uh, 2,400 Jamaican dollars plus tax. So here's what they say about our cultural industries. So Jamaica is distinguished by the worldwide reach of its culture, particularly music. The National Culture Policy of 2003 identifies the important role of culture in national development through promotion of positive national self-identity, development of cultural industries and institutions, and cultural linkages to education, science and technology, and other economic industries and sectors. Cultural industries involve the creation, production, and per commercialization of content which are intangible and cultural in nature, which are typically protected by copyright and which may take the form of goods and services. So last year, September, I moved to Germany for three months, uh, going through an incubator program, really an accelerator program uh, in the tech space. And there were three things that were constantly brought up by the Germans whenever I'd say I was Jamaican. They would first say, Bob Marley, Usain Bolt, and we. In that order, those were the three things. In my experience, there are people that don't know Sean Paul is Jamaican, right? We're talking about Shaggy. This is something that's important. We look at weed, we talk about cursing bad words. Jamaica, we need to get serious about our culture. You can't complain about other people making money off of it when we are not putting money into it ourselves and we are holding ourselves back because we can't use a bad word that fully loaded. It's not a bad word anymore. It's a cultural word. And they have, we have sessions, we have events using those words as their names in the United States. So I think we need to get onto this topic. I'm going to introduce my guest. And you're all going to know who this person is. But T-O-K, which sometimes we wonder what that stands for. I said touch of class, but we will have Alex tell us what it is. Former member of the group T-O-K that we a lot of us grew up with. So Alex, welcome to the show. Yes, boss. Big up yourself. Big up yourself. Brethren. Big up. We're going to have to joke about the brethren for one thing. No problem, man. So my goal today is to have you see a different side of Alex. The side I see. <laughs> <laughs> Alex, Alex and I went to the same high school. Alex was a few years ahead of me at, at Campion College yeah. of all places. He was a member of the choir with two other members of the group. Like 106 yeah. and Park yeah. with Footprints and Galia yeah. Lead and stuff like that. Yeah, well, we've done a, a fair share of yeah. stuff in, 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 in the music business too. And I mean, the funniest thing is just being able to travel the world and see how much the Jamaican culture is appreciated. You understand the music? Like, there's so many things about Jamaican that everybody just loves from the way we talk, from the way we dress, to the music. We are so influential in terms of what we do. I don't think we really understand the full gravity of it, you know what I mean? No, and I think you have to actually leave Jamaica to understand yeah. the impact of our mm -hmm. culture. You go to a Japan and these people don't speak English, but they can speak and understand. That is the patois. patois. And you can go to Japan and you can get ackee and sawfish, you can get your chicken. You understand? You have situations where we, we've been on tour in Japan and we've used Japanese bands, whereas strictly Japanese people and them play like a rock <laughs> <laughs> you understand? I remember we went to Japan one year and they had like 
See, that's why we are jumping into the market or stuff. Because when we are to Japan, they have DVD selling how to dance, Jamaica. Being taught by Japanese. By Japanese? Yeah. Not it's Jamaica. There's a Japanese DVD of how to dance, Jamaica. Because a lot of them come down here and they immerse themselves in the culture. And then they take back what they learn and they care about. And, and, and so for me, when, when you bring that up, thankfully we have a, a number of people doing that. Global yeah. Bob is one of them. We have a lot of them, the dancers. And they dancers are they constantly yeah. in Germany especially. But I never forgot when the Zumba, ke- Zumba games came out for the Nintendo Wii. Mm-hmm. And after we, Catherine, my wife, had her first child, and when she had Luchi used Zumba to go and do her, her practice. And I was listening to it and watching the dances, and I was like, why couldn't we have the same thing with our Jamaican dances? Dance all would be a hell of a workout, man. Yeah, it is. It is. I mean, come on, you go to the dance hall session, then it's Jesus. a workout. I mean, <laughs> climbing up on a building and jumping up is quite a workout. Yeah, but even before you reach that, if we, if we just start with Pond River, Pond Bank, yeah, it's a workout. You're already going to be most a workout. Most of the dancers, then if you realize something, most dancers. The whole night is so you go up there, good to go. No, man. So, since we're talking about dancing, I can show this. So, I can't, I don't think you know I would still have this. Yeah, so, yeah, so this yeah, is yeah. this is the second album TOK ever released, wow. an unknown language. This is, I still have a CD here. Well, the CD isn't here, the CD's gone. I, <laughs> I, I wonder the what the CD is though. The CD, man, we, we rip the CD and we don't use CDs anymore, right? Yeah, MP3s, yeah, true, true. But I've never forgotten. So, these are. Yeah, look, the crew. Uh, yes. Hey man, man, you look. Yes. You yes. did it age? You just grow your hair longer? Yeah, I don't I know if Alex did. Yeah, yeah, that was a. Yeah. But yeah. The, part of the reason I kept this one is because they're, I get mentioned in there. I get the big up David and Real Vibes. So that's yeah, how that's close good. I feel that. Like. Yeah, man. Bridging for a Yeah, Bridging for a long time. Oh, and literally, I watch anime and play video games by Alex. Yeah. Yeah, it's Alex. been a minute since I've been doing that stuff. But yeah, it's, it's, it's still. It's a, the key thing for me, I, if you don't understand, especially entertainment. As an artist, you find inspiration in so many different things. I mean, it's so for them to mention. I don't have ever actually told you this. Our song Footprints, um, the intro, I got inspiration for the intro the from playing a video game. Oh, I, did, I didn't know that one. Yeah. Actually, when I was playing, um, I, think, I think it was Mega Man at the time. <laughs> that would make sense. Yeah. And that would make sense. I cracked the game, and it's in cracking the game. I was like, yo, you hear the, the melodies, the and, melodies. And from that, I got the inspiration for the intro. So, music can be found in <laughs> anything. Yeah. Walking on the road, seeing how mother interacts with a child, you know, seeing a big bottom girl on the road walking, you know, so many different things that inspire you to create all these different kinds of music. It's in it. It, music is in everything, you know. So, so we talk about the lack of support for the creative industries. People don't tend to think of it as jobs when you, if your parents ask you what do you want to be in your growth, yeah, they expect it's not a lawyer. They don't expect it to be an artist, a writer. Mm-hmm. The videographer that has to do the video, or the even producer. Back in the day, even a runner. Even a an, runner. Even an athlete back in the day was scoffed at because a lot of these jobs are not the regular typical atypical lawyer, doctor, dentist, where you can show to mommy say, Yeah, this is what you have all the accolades in terms of academia. It is a different thing now when you say, Well, you want to join the arts because they see it as a situation where the majority of artists and to some extent, to some extent even athletes don't really reach the pinnacle of success and don't really get. Anything from it, you understand? The mm-hmm. very the percentage is very small. You get me? But at the same time, the way the music, the way the world has changed now, you know, because of the emergence of people like you see, both you actually see that you can show you know your child can be an athlete and be a good one and make a good living. Out of it. It's not impossible, it. right? And I think the key thing that a lot of people know is to realize that you have to allow your kids to dream and work hard. You know what I mean? Realistically, so of course, right. but nevertheless expand your mind man and not just be caught in this box where you have to be either A, B, C or D because even point of sometimes in nowadays a lot of a lot of lawyers don't even really actually make that much money anyway. Anyway, there's actually it's an oversupply in yeah, lawyers. Exactly. You, you understand it's just it's just to have it as a namesake. Okay I'm a doctor so and so or I'm a lawyer this and that you still can't get a proper job. You see you know what I mean? So Alright, all right. so so parents allow your kids to dream big and then support them, don't tell them they have to be a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. There are so many more options in this day and age. And I wanted to add on to that then. How do we 
support. Beyond the idea of buying the music instead of downloading it, going to the shows and buying tickets, buying merchandise if you have merchandise, post and so on. What can we actually do directly to help the Jamaican creative industry or an artist like you are? What is it that we I think we need to create more workshops, more programs in schools, you know, for the kids in terms of being able to have access to the instruments, maybe probably can do like a workshop at the studios, you know, and probably liaise with probably some of the some of the upcoming producers you now or some of the established producers and say, all right, this does this, blah, 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 you know? And I think it's a different way to channel the energy of these kids too, you know what I mean? They always say music suits the savage beats, but these kids, you know, the allure is there for being an artist or, or being an artist. You know, if you provide ways for them to go in and say, all right, here what you do, this, that, that, but you have to make sure that the education part is important as well, so you can be able to read the contracts and learn what to sign from, what not to sign, not to stand, and give away your life for absolutely nothing. There are different ways. And funny enough, even with the video game industry, yep. it's so fun that even now in the video game industry that you can be paid to play. To play, not yeah. even make Paid game. to play and make money. Yeah, right. I mean, like serious money. Yeah. There's so many income streams now that you know everything is streamed, whether on YouTube or Facebook or whatever. And there are ways for people to generally yeah. make serious money. People want and like entertainment, mm -hmm. and, and we need to realize that this is a part of the entertainment. Jamaica is a brand that the whole world knows. We have to. We we have something special, and we know it. But we're not monetizing that brand. No, enough. we're not. So yeah. so how we did that? We had like a Chris Blackwell with Bob Marley build out island records which then went to eventually become island death jam mm -hmm. and then we, we haven't really had anything since that nobody seemed to have built a label along those lines yes we have a vp records but that can even be a sore topic for most of the artists yeah, that we're talking yeah. how, how comes we have not had a repeat of island records it's sad to say and i mean i don't mean to be i'm not going to broad brush our people and how they think but a lot of times you seem to get caught up in the bandwagon is mentality where until something becomes a success elsewhere we don't think it is important to support or push it yes and it's, it's really sad because as i said before you would not have wanted your child to be a runner or an athlete if there was no the same boat yep. you get me you would not have wanted your child to even think of even going into anything else you know what i mean like i mean it, it is just unfortunate that we really actually don't have a situation where we support and we believe in things before or you yeah, can have the foresight you can see where something can be or where right. it can become before right. it actually becomes something. Well I love that you said that because one of the things we in the diaspora tend to believe, I feel that I have one foot there, one foot here, but mm -hmm. yeah, Jamaicans locally are quick to claim the Jamaicanness of somebody abroad who's uh -huh. done really well, even if they weren't born here or they left mm -hmm. here really early. So we, mm -hmm. we're going to claim Raheem Sterling and Tierra uh -huh. Because him of Jamaican parents. Jamaican parents, he left when he was young. You never claim him before him start playing. Exactly. And, and if you did something bad, you're going to distance you yourself from it. But the yeah. thing is, the, the question I always ask everybody, if Raheem Sterling stayed in Jamaica, since I played football here, if he stayed in Jamaica, he would not be where he is. Mm -hmm. He couldn't be playing at the level he's playing mm -hmm. And there's a reason we don't invest in talent mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm. Not enough. And it's the yeah, same yeah. thing. You know, unfortunately, yes, thankfully, you saying Bolt was local. Asafa Powell was local. We have started to Then, therefore, I mean, it can be it done locally. It can be done. It can be done locally, and people will pay to come down to us. They actually just did the racers camp. Of at UA where people paid to come here to learn what we are mm -hmm. doing. And I think the same way people should be paid to come here to learn about the way we produce music. Because you look at the influence of dancehall and reggae music on not just reggaeton, that's no but hip hop. And where hip hop, hip -hop came from and, and cool her it is different yeah, cool DJ Herb. Cool Herb mm -hmm. man and, and what Dance we Dancehall and Reggae Yeah man dance all influenced them to create the little hip hop movement mm -hmm. and then you have reggaeton. Reggaeton it's so funny you know, that I hear some I've heard some people claiming that reggaeton is unique and it is whatever <laughs> and you know like it it, 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 it is something that has been about for like what probably 10, probably 10 12 years. Twelve years now. Probably yeah. 10, 12 years. Yeah, so how can you claim so that you know it is blatantly Blatant. taking from something. I mean, it's, it's so blatant own. that it comes from one song, one beat from one rhythm. I mean, yeah. you, you can't. So yeah. it's funny when you bring up reggaeton. You guys have been on, on the roof with, with Wood Mundos. We used to be on the show Fridays, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tele Second Channel Mundos had a show called The Roof. And Fridays was Reggae Friday. So DJ GQ, Robert, and myself, my brother and myself were there every Friday showing the new dances. TOK was one of the groups that performed. 
And we have people like Evie Queen and Daddy Yankee and Tego Calderon. They were there. We saw this birth itself in Miami uh -huh. out of our music culture, out of our sessions, our parties yeah. that were going and on. I mean, I love reggaeton. I love the Spanish culture, I love Spanish music. Yeah. And it's just so funny for me. It shows how really and truly, even though Jamaica may have been the birthplace of reggae and the birthplace of dance, it shows that how Caribbean music is all, it, 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 all intertwined. All, all intertwined. Were you, just, you were just in Kassar? No? Yeah, we have a huge fan base in Kassar. We pick up all the, all the, all the Ticos, you know? Ticos and Ticos, you know what I mean? <laughs> Cause I have to practice Spanish, you know what I mean? I have to practice. Habla Espanol? Oh, un poco. Oh, si? Sí? Más o menos. No necesita practicar mucho. Sí. Yo sé sí. When it don't, yo sé sí. No, but you see, I don't want to start with it, you know. I was thinking that don't speak too fast, you know? Well, this fast your poor boy. But that's funny, you know, because so so we tell them don't speak too fast, but then when we talk as Jamaicans to anybody in English, they're like, slow down. Yeah, yeah. It's funny, but it's a Caribbean thing, I think, for us to all speak fast. When you're speaking English, you're speaking Spanish. It's just that. But Which is weird though. We we speak fast and we do almost almost everything else almost slow. Everything. Almost Yeah, but you see we dance slow sometimes, but we dance fast. We dance like, fast for the dance most fast, part. Right? I mean we, we we have an energy in our blood yeah. that we need to just But you know the funny thing I've always said and especially because I've had the, the pleasure and the honor of being able to travel the world as an artist and I mean I give thanks because I love my Jamaican culture, I love my Jamaican music, I love my Jamaican people. You know, I think I've always said I think we are the we are the best are doing the good things and we are the worst <laughs> at doing the bad things. Yes, uh, we are hey. the best, the best I should say. And anything we try to do, we, do, we want we to do it well. well. We're, going to, we're going to go all over. We need to do it well. well. <laughs> the key thing is that when you travel the world and you see how much um, Jamaica has had an interest and an impact. You mentioned Costa Rica a while ago and I mean we toured Costa Rica extensively like so much so even when, before we went Vegas had to he made a comment on Instagram about it, said, well, I can't say you can't tell you for that. And before our <laughs> concerts um, had started, all the venues were sold out, you understand? We wow. went there, the, the, the crowd lined up around the back, you know, like, full line up around the back and the places and around. And seeing the impact that even nowadays generation, and you're doing some older songs, and see how that the, the younger generation yep. people are reacting to it as if it's a brand new song. Right. It's unbelievable. It shows the power, I believe, of good, strong, solid music. We as Jamaicans, we have, I uh, try to say that every interview I do, we as Jamaicans do not realize how much potential, how much talent is here. It's here. Not just in music, not just in sports, but just with us, just the raw talent. Raw talent. That is just, you know, not being Nurtured. given the chance. To give give them a chance. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, well, since you, you bring up more of the nurturing side, what do we need to do from the diaspora side to help nurture? Is that we need? Is it that we need to donate to more arts programs in schools, in our, to, especially as alumni to our mm -hmm. high schools to stay in touch with it? Is it that we need to actively be equity investors into whether it's a record label or a new album project? If you have you have a new album coming out, should we be saying, hey, we, we can show yeah, something and support? What, what what do you need us to do? I think it's a bit of everything, to be honest. I think you definitely have to be more involved on the ground as well. So you can't just be over there and, and say, okay, well, maybe, you know, oh, somebody tell you, say, you know, maybe you should be contributing to this thing or developing that thing. Sometimes by, I guess, coming back, spending some time here, understanding what is right. happening here before you do certain Before. Things, would definitely be able to help. I love that you said that, the understanding before. My experience with the diaspora conferences, including the one that just happened, is, is that they tend not to let the diaspora speak, they speak at us, but at the same time, I encounter so many people in the diaspora who haven't been back in 10 years, 5 years, mm -hmm. they don't read the news, so, and oh, yeah, so they don't, don't know, know what don't is know happening. Exactly. You have to know. And, yeah. we, and we start so many projects before finding out first, is somebody already on the ground doing it, and can I help them? And provide resources. Definitely. Yeah, man, definitely. So, I mean, in, in our case, we, we work really closely together. So, you did a recent song, I Believe in Love with Busy Signal. Yeah. And you actually used some of Real Vibe Studios' cameras. Yeah, there's a camera. The camera nice yeah. still, and it makes me look extra. Make it up, but that's, yeah, I'll, I'll make sure we tell Yeah, yeah, yeah tell Kyle about that. that. We, yeah. We'll bring him on, on set soon. Yeah. So, that's good. And we've we gone over the 30 minutes, but it's too good. We're not shutting it up. Mm -hmm. 
but it was so, good. So that was good. Yes. We've we've been on tour with you. We've actually been in a few videos, including Gallia I don't even Lee. remember that one. Yeah, man, Gallia I Lee, front row, Gil Green had us teaching the crowd how to do the dances yeah, and sing on the man. plane. So we've been we in. We got a lot of slack for that one because you know, at the time, you know, when you sing, know, the whole beauty queen. Yeah, the beauty queen is a tough one. Jamaica win and how we kind of, you know, yeah. but Jamaica have to win. You know, you did the other girls, but yeah. that was a fun it was video. Fun, to, to see the end result, uh, to see how much work was done in my, I mean, we, I love be, being behind the scenes with you guys for, for those guys. And to the Jamaica one versus that one, that was a lot of fun to see as well. We've been in studio and you guys have, have put together a lot of songs. We did posters, merchandise with you guys. I remember we were in Tampa with the posters. Yes. We, my most fun memory with you guys was, was when the, the raccoon was outside the hotel. <laughs> Raccoons love combos, I can just tell you right now, the little combos, especially the pepperoni ones, they will take it out their hand and just eat it. Right? Yeah, yeah, so David wants to heal the world, you know. Right? <laughs> Make a better place for our children, our children, <laughs> One day, you know, white man and black man, we can all live together in peace with the animals and stuff. Yeah, so for, for those of <laughs> you who don't know, Alex, <laughs> so everybody knows Alex as a, as a singer, that, yeah. that he sings music, he writes, but they don't know the side I know. He, might, he does voices. Right, he, he would, you would love to be in a cartoon or yeah, animated I movie. Love, the thing is, I Stand love up entertainment and entertaining. And that's the funniest thing, that's actually how I started with music, by doing impersonations. I used to, I couldn't dance like Michael. So, because I couldn't dance like Michael, I, I tried to sing like him, because I tried to sing his songs and make sure that I got hee hee on the right note and make sure it was perfect, you understand what I'm saying? But I couldn't really do it, so, you know, because when I, when I dance, it's like I have gum stuck at the bottom of my shoe and stuff, so. I couldn't really get the dancing thing going, you see? Yeah. But singing thing, maturity, you get me? But yeah, I've always loved entertainment. Comedy, acting, impersonation, and singing. It's the whole nine yards for me, definitely. So, so impersonating me? Bridging, I don't mean to say Bridging, so working at the you know, you see, you see real vibes, and you know, my name is David, and I'm here, we're talking about me and Obama right here, we're speaking, and stuff, you know, and me, I have a lovely wife, Catherine, Catherine, and you know, we have the loop, you can see her with, with Obama and stuff, you know, and you know, real, real, real vibes was really the, the, the thing that really started, started the whole thing, you know, me and my brother, you know, Robert and stuff, and my father's not really here right now and stuff. I guess, yeah? Yeah, no, you can't get the hand movers. But I guess the voice, give it to him. So it's funny, right over to your left, you know, that table right here is where I programmed real vibes. This is where Dad and I, in this room, is where we had to pitch every summer and every Christmas since I was 15. We had to pitch our parents on a business plan wow. then, where they could invest up to 10,000 US in it. And they said no <laughs> for five years until we came up with real vibes. And I sat right near it over and coded the website and then we launched it. Yeah, so, so this room is actually that special and this area, but, but you nail it still, that's funny. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to make Dad watch it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really catch the voice yet, but no, it's, yeah, it's well. the inflections and the gesticulations. Me catch yeah, it, but yeah, give me time. Yeah. But you see, music, and this, uh, as I believe, there's so, as before, there's so much here. So much we can explore, so much we can exploit. And it, it, it kind of saddens me sometimes, especially when sometimes I, it feels good, yes, as a Jamaican, you're seeing, the Jamaican flag all across the world and stuff like that. I mean, I've been to places like Italy and, and different places in Europe, and you see Jamaican shirts and stuff like this. Look at Gucci logo upon the side of it. We're not getting, any not of getting that. anything of it. You understand what I'm saying? Not. We, ju the Jamaica brand in itself is a marketable brand. It is a brand, it is always cool. Everybody wants to be. Idris Elba just talked about it in an article where he, growing up, it wasn't cool to be African in the UK, so he said he was Jamaican. Yeah, but I, but <laughs> when you mention that, I mean, I remember once we were, where were we? We were in, we were in Germany, and we, a bunch of us we were on tour, and we were walking through the park, one of the park in Germany, and we buck up on some African, you hey, know, yes, yes, you know, they, they're selling weed, hey, we're selling some weed, you know, we are, we are Jamaican, yeah, we are Bomali, this up. So I said, I don't want to swim, right. I said, Mr. Bridget. <laughs> What from your boy in Jamaica? Which part of Jamaica you come from? Ah, Trench Town? Trench Town? You come from Trench Town? I said, no. You see, when we started talking, they realized they bucked into some real, real Jamaica. Jamaica and, they, no. and they exited very quickly. Yeah, man. Yes, but it, it, it was always so cool to be Jamaican. To be Jamaican. Because yeah. we as Jamaicans don't really embrace our Jamaica. Yes. yes. Yeah. We actually yeah. tried to tone it down yeah. a bit more yeah, British. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to be Jamaican. Yeah. Somehow. It's so cool to be Jamaican. Yeah, man, I agree. Alright, so the, the one I want to leave with before we get there, I want to ask this one question related to your, your songs. You have new music that's coming yes, out, I and do. I'm going to put you on blast to sing them because yeah. your, your voice might not have warmed yeah, up as well. Yeah, the voice is there, but it, I mean, you know, but I mean, 
actually, you mentioned Hassan earlier. Uh, have Hassan out oh, now. Um, you know, first and foremost, my I'm on Instagram, Alex T O K One. You can follow me. You know, um, Alex T One on Vivo and YouTube and stuff. Have Hassan, you know, this is in my company. I love shopping here. One of the cameras was your camera as well. So, um, and my album is entitled Next Revolution. It is dropping this year. I am very excited. It's my first solo project, my first solo endeavor. I'm really excited. It is, it is basically because we've traveled the world, you understand, and been exposed to so many different genres of music. Um, I felt it only fitting that my album should be a reflection. Yes, uh, so, right, yeah, so basically, you know, I mean, the dance hall is there, the reggae is there, but so many different things can be incorporated with the whole Jamaican style, you know what I mean? It, 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 it is, it's just there. So, this album I'm coming with, which I asked before, I'm really excited about, is just a showcase of that. You know? Well, if, once you add Jamaican to anything, we add more flavor. Mm -hmm. When it Rihanna needed flavor. to bust, Rihanna had to have Elephant Man on her. So, when yeah. Cat the Luna needed a bus, then yeah, I yeah, will yeah. actually go to the fat man as well. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so when we see Nicki Minaj just drop her a song, right? Yeah, yeah. Megatron, yeah. Pentatron. Mm -hmm. And it's like a, a dancer remix. It's a dancer remix, remix but as, as nerds, we definitely like the Transformers reference. Don't yeah. know why she went with a Decepticon instead of one after yeah, one. Yeah, true. true kind of interesting. True. Maybe it's a subtle message. But <laughs> if, if you had to pick one TOK, I mean, it's 25 years of work you guys have. If you could have a rap artist pick one TOK song, to remix the way that oh. she just did that. What is the mm. one song you would want somebody to? Wow, that's a tough you know, because you see, it depends what message you want to say. If it's something for the girls, it probably have to be, ah, your lead, you right. understand? If it's something more reflective and more thinking about, like, especially, first and foremost, my heart goes out to all those people who suffered in, in El Paso, you know what I mean? Yeah, well, and Dayton, Ohio. And right. Dayton, Ohio as well. It's just, it's, it's, it's a recurring theme, you know what I mean? And if it was something maybe on that kind right. of tone, it would be the... Right. Footprints. So, well, so, so then, you know, we, we're going to touch on this topic then, you know, since yeah. I know, like, so, so footprints and just where all of that came from. I don't think that many people actually know your yeah, it's stemmed, personal tragedy, yeah, it's tragedy it's that you've experienced. It stemmed from, from personal tragedy. I lost my brother back in 2003 and it's, it's from that tragedy in itself was it that I had to harness that whole energy and put it in, in my music. Right. And that's how the song put me in what was inspired by his, his passing. You know what I mean? Um, so when I sing that song, I sing the scene from my belly button. Yeah, yeah, man. Because yeah. It's, my, it's my heart and my soul I put in that one. So, um, in music, I think good music actually lasts a test of time. Yep. So I mean, whether it's now, five years from now, whatever, it's hard. All right. Well, we're going to wrap up and bring Kyle in to talk about the film side of things. But definitely, you did something that was different yeah, amongst other people. That. <laughs> just, just that. As you said, we are about to wrap up. Just, just. Oh, that's great. Maybe we just wrap up. With our sign. I mean, it's red still, so I don't know what's happening. I don't know. I don't know what it was Maybe I should keep talking. It was close but it was, I mean, it's kind of people, people were chatting. People were? Yeah. Really? People, people tagging people. Anybody ask a question? Uh, no, I didn't see any questions. So I Hold on. Oh, yeah. People were tagging on 250, 245. US. Ah. Yo. Now get rid of the blue more hooky. Nice vibe, though. No man, it might. I'm not gonna lie. The highlight for me, girl, is the you know, impersonate me. I don't want to go too much Catherine? of a crazy side. Catherine is going to die. Uh, Catherine, no, <laughs> Catherine. <laughs> no, man, I, I don't want to get too crazy because I still have a kind of maintain. You know, like, <laughs> I don't really know what that matters. Level of what? They need to see the review. When we're going to this Johnny thing, there, man. Oh, hardware. I want to do the more open mic night. Oh yes, yes, yes. Remove it.